All right, guys, as you can see, this comes with a really nice cage. It's all angle iron. It's welded and bolted together. Uh, they don't ship it with a manual. I had to email the company, um, and they'll send it through, their, through your email. It's a PDF file, and you just print it out. Um, so I am going to put this thing together, get it mounted on the um, tractor, and we'll put it through the motions, get the air out of the cylinders. All right, and then we'll go try it out. All right, guys, what I had to do here is make a platform, a rolling platform. So what I did is I got a sheet of plywood. It's a four. Uh, rather than being 96, I cut it at 88 because uh, 88 is all I needed. Um, sheet of plywood, so it's four feet by 88 inches long. Um, the pieces I cut here, I just mounted them here for extra support rather than throwing them away. Now the bottom here, I put those uh, rolling dollies that you can pick up at uh, Arbor Freight. Now these uh, rolling dollies here, um, uh, I picked these up at uh, Arbor Freight. Um, I forgot what they were, they're not that expensive. But they're, they say they can handle 1,000 pounds each, even these little ones, they, they got the same caster type wheels. 1,000 pounds each, this unit weighs uh, 1,300 pounds. So the majority of the weight's gonna go here, so I got these two big ones here. And then the rest of it is just for the, uh, the arm to rest down here. Some assembly is required. <laughs> Just, Just so you know, all the pivot points on here, every single one has got a grease fitting. They don't come greased, they're bone dry. So once you get this thing assembled, or just before you assemble it, maybe lube it up a little bit with some grease, but before you get this thing going, pump some grease in there. All right, guys, I got the backhoe all put together. Um, let me tell you, this thing's pretty heavy, especially if you're by yourself. Um, I did have one little issue, uh, a little damage that was in shipping. Uh, it wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, let me show you what happened. All right, guys, this here is the stabilizer right here. Uh, what happened was in shipping, they wire these things up like this, up so they don't go flying down. Uh, somehow in shipping, it must have got hit. Uh, and it pushed the stabilizer up so much that it pushed the bumper up out of the way, or bent it, I should say, and this went hitting up against the frame. This hydraulic uh, uh, hose here hit up against the frame and bent this here, and it started leaking right here. So I had to get a new hose made locally, um, and I had to bring the hose and the fitting here that you see um, over there. Um, and also on the other end where the uh, control valves are, uh, bring that too. Um, but I called up Titan Attachments and um, the guy said no problem, it's under warranty. Uh, and they ordered me four hoses actually because um, in the manual, it not only do you get one hose, but you're going to get all four hoses um, that go to each stabilizer. So two per stabilizer, you're going to get four hoses and it was free, so it's under warranty, so that's very cool. All right, guys, here in the back, you're going to have two hydraulic lines, of course, for your uh, backhoe, and you hook this up to your tractor. Um, here, you hook it up to your three-point, your lower go here, and your upper link goes right here. Now, you, it gives you, they give you both Cat 1 and Cat 2 uh, connections, so if you wanted to, you can switch this around and go Cat 2. Same thing with this here, you can push this in all the way. Uh, I'm sorry, you flip this thing around actually. You flip it around and put the uh, bigger side in and uh, you'll have your CAT2 connection up here too. All right, I had to modify the uh, platform a little bit here to raise it up a little bit and to strengthen it. Uh, let me show you what I did. All right, what I ended up doing here is I put two 
two by sixes and an extra two by six piece here over there and the same thing on the other side um, to raise it up high enough to where I can hook up my uh, lower links to my tractor there um, well, I shouldn't have any problem uh, so I made it rest here there where it pivots and the same deal on the other side right there all right and then the rest of it you saw is the same I got the uh, moving um, dollies one here near the middle and one on the very end and I got the bigger ones over here in the back you can see and like I said those are a thousand pounds each that they're able to handle all right guys connecting your uh, backhoe to your tractor shouldn't be any different than most any other uh, three-point uh, implement um, you put your uh, connect them to your lower links here and your top link uh, the hydraulics I got the uh, rear remotes um, you have to figure out which one is out when you pull your uh, auxiliary lever uh, depending which way you go you're gonna if you move it one way it'll send it out this way and that'll be your return if you move your lever the other way this one will be sending uh, hydraulic fluid and the other one will become a return um, you got to figure that which one is what but what I can tell you is on the um, they don't mark it on the uh, back hole but if you look in the back here okay this is the back of the uh, back hole and these are the hydraulic lines right here okay um, so you got this line and this line um, the one on the right which is this one here that goes up to the valve control and this one here is the out so this one's the in going up and this one here is the out going back out again okay so the one on the right hand side when you're sit when you're standing back here uh, that's the in for the hydraulics and this one here that you see is the out okay Right now we have to take off all the locks. All right, now I need to get the air out of the system.
All right, so I dug one hole already. Uh, I've been planting trees here in my orchard. So I'm using this to uh, dig out the hole. Um, and I've never ran a backhoe before, so it's kind of hard to teach an old dog a new trick, trying to get your brain to figure out which lever does what. It's going to take a while. But I got the basics down, and uh, so I'm going to try digging another one here. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. So before we get started, obviously, you got to take all the locks off. So you got a lock here for your uh, stabilizers. Take those off. You got one here for the swing. This locks it so it doesn't swing back and forth. And this one here keeps this, the arm from coming down again. Now the only way to really uh, take this off is to pull the boom back and then pull this back. All right. All right, guys. Like I said earlier, um, these are your rear remotes here. Um, I marked here with I put a piece of tape on it to show which one is flowing out and which one is the return uh, and also put a piece of tape on this one so I know to put these two together now when you go to your auxiliary lever here alright guys on your tractor and mine is right here this is your auxiliary lever um, this will control the rear remotes and what direction of flow the hydraulic fluid comes out so when I pull this back here like this it's going to flow the fluid out of those rear remotes in one direction and when I push it back it's going to reverse the flow in another direction. So you see where I had the black tape marked on there. I know when I push this back uh, it's coming out of that one where I have the tape on it. So now what we're going to do is put a bungee cord on here and hold this back. Um, some have uh, a way on the tractor, they have a way to lock that in either direction. Uh, this one doesn't but the bungee cord will work. So here I am at the back of the tractor. I got my bungee cord already set up here. And there, that locks it back like that. And, um, and I'm ready to dig.
All right, guys, you can all stop laughing now. <laughs> That's my second hole uh, for a tree. Uh, roughly three feet wide, three feet deep, and three feet across. Maybe a little more than three feet, but it's not bad. Uh, don't expect this to dig, I mean, direct down force. It, you got to kind of push, put down force on it and curl the uh, bucket at the same time and it'll it'll dig just fine now if you haven't I've mentioned this many times in my videos I have hard clay here as you can see and it's very dry so the clay is br actually breaking up like um, like dirt but usually it's clumps like that stuff over there um, but uh, that's when it's wet when it's moist it, it comes out in clumps and it's uh, it sticks to everything, man. If you walk around on it, you'll, you'll end up with an extra 20, 30 pounds of mud or uh, clay on your uh, boots. All right, guys. As you can see, it worked pretty darn good. I am no expert by any means, <laughs> but I will get the job done. Uh, for what I'm going to be using it for on this property, uh, putting trees in, uh, trenches, water lines, things like that, it's perfect for that. Now, uh, I paid... 3329 for this. It was a Memorial Day uh, weekend uh, sale. Um, normally it's $3699, so $3,700. It's still a good deal. It really is. Um, I mean, you got to think about all the, the this is this is some heavy duty metal that's on here. The wells, the cutting, the hydraulics, the hoses, uh, the valve assembly in here for the hydraulics. I mean, every thirty, you know, thirty-six, thirty-seven hundred dollars, man. It's a, it is a really good deal. Um, it is a little jumpy. Um, like I said, I'm not used to these controls at all. You got to baby them a little bit. And if you get one, and if you've never done it before, like me. Uh, just practice, you know, baby it and figure out uh, until your brain figures out what lever does what. Uh, they have the uh, diagram up here. Um, so it's going to take, uh, it's going to take a, you know, a, a good day or so to get, really get used to it, you know. Um, but, you know, like I said, for what I'm going to be using it for, it's more than, and, and more than enough for what I'm going to be using it for. In conclusion, I think it is a super good backhoe for the money. Uh, this is not something you want to get to do work with, um, you know. Although you probably could do side jobs with it, you know. Uh, but nothing big. It's a light duty. It will dig your holes, and um, you know it'll it'll serve its purpose. Now, if I was thinking about getting the original one that goes with this Mahindra, but they wanted, uh, I think it's ten and a half or eleven grand for it. Um, I can't justify spending that kind of money just to dig some holes for trees and put in a trench here and there. Um, it's just too much, too much money. This is more practical. Uh, this is something I'm going to use occasionally. It's not something I'm going to be using all the time. Um, so it will come in handy. It really will. Um, now they sell uh, two types at uh, Titan Attachments. They sell this type that plugs right into your uh, rear remotes. Well, they sell another type that's similar in size um, that has its own tank and uh, pump that runs off your PTO. Um, from what I've understood or what I've read is the self-contained ones are a little more powerful. But I, I, uh, the other one has uh, a, a thumb on the bucket um, with an extra hydraulic cylinder here. That's good if you want to pick up things and all that. Um, it's it's uh, how much was that one? Oh man, I don't remember offhand. I'll put it in the link. This I'll put it in the description below. Uh, very similar in price, um, uh, but I didn't want to get that one because I read some reviews on it that weren't that good as far as it being real twitchy and not having a power. But that could have been the, the person itself. Now, if you're you're running, if you're if you're normally running a backhoe and you're running a big one and you get on this, it's going to seem like a toy to you, obviously. Okay. But look, for the average Joe like me, and, and somebody just wants to, you know, put trees in the ground and dig a trench now and then for water lines, it's perfect. Okay, you don't need nothing fancy. Uh, you know, why waste all? Why waste your money? Um, so yeah, again, I think it's an awesome uh, backhoe. It's going to take some time getting used to, but it's uh, 
it's a good backhoe. It's very heavy duty. Don't think this is very thin metal on here. This is not. This is really thick stuff. And some very, very good welds on here too, I'm noticing. All right. All right, guys. So I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you out in your purchase of one or not. And um, like I said, it's a light duty. Um, you know, if you're going to use it occasionally, it's perfect. All right, guys. So please like, subscribe, and share, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.